this is a very handy viewer which allows me to preview which lens I'm going to use when I'm uh, for the for the photograph. Yeah, this looks this looks like a, a 90 millimeter lens is the one I want to use. I'm Steve Rosenthal. I'm a, a retired architectural photographer, trained as an architect. I have photographed uh, New England churches, mostly small town New England village churches, for 45 years. And these buildings, uh, I was drawn to them as structures. And it was only after I put together a body of work, uh, a good number of photographs, which were taken over the succeeding decades, that uh, I started to look back and try to understand what they meant, uh, how they were built, how they happened how these wonderful buildings got uh, constructed, who did them. These are what they call ready load film packets. And they, they come packaged one to a sheet. And they make life a lot easier. Than, when, than the old days when one had to load individual sheets into a film holder uh, and then unload it later. There's no dust to worry about and no humidity problems to have to worry about. I used to process my own film, uh, hundreds of sheets in a drum processor over the years, but now I have a lab do it because I have gone digital and uh, I no longer have a darkroom. I've been working on film for my whole life, but uh, recently I've gone to this method of working, which is a hybrid process, uh, where I am now shooting on film and ending up with a digital end product. Uh, scanning the film, uh, and then working on it in the computer uh, to end up with a digital image. And uh, in my mind, it's the best of both worlds. And now I'm gonna convert it to a positive. It's in negative now, obviously. At this stage, uh, we have a very muddy image. And what we need to do is adjust the contrast with the white points and the black points, the light areas and the dark areas, to get the picture more into the ballpark as a place to start. One of the things that really intrigued me was the wonderful capability of these papers and inks uh, in the digital process to uh, reproduce a subtle tonality of rich whites in the pictures. And I thought it was so appropriate to the churches that I'm now working on uh, because uh, the prints are really magnificent, in the, uh, especially in the white tones. This beautiful church is based on designs in this book called The Country Builder's Assistant, written by Asher Benjamin in 1797. This is an actual copy of the original book uh, that inspired so much architecture in New England, so much of the federal architecture in uh, the early part of the uh, 19th century in New England. It had a great influence on uh, church design. It was sold mainly to um, uh, builders and carpenters and not to potential homeowners. So it had quite an impact because the people who were buying this book in great numbers were people who were actually building the buildings. Uh, on the right is the drawing as it appeared in the uh, Benjamin Builder's Guide and you can see in the photograph of the church how closely it resembles the uh, actual drawing in the book. It's almost a, a carbon copy of it, but you can also see that there was some liberty taken with the, uh, with the design. 
The books that Benjamin produced were inspired by uh, English pattern books, which preceded the publication of his book. Uh, they were uh, mainly uh, designed for buildings that were to be built in the traditional building medium in England, which was brick or stone. And what Benjamin did was Americanize uh, these books to a different material, to wood, uh, which often uh, imitated stone. So what he did was he, uh, he changed the material, but he also uh, changed the proportions of uh, that appeared in these books, and he really Americanized them and, and uh, didn't merely lift them. So really what he's doing is uh, working with a new vocabulary. The people who built these buildings were master carpenters, joiners, craftsmen, but they had no formal training in design. And they learned by uh, apprenticing themselves to, to other uh, people who were already established as master craftsmen and builders. This is the oldest congregational church in the United States, uh, built in 1717 in West Barnstable, Massachusetts. And already by 1723, it was cut down the middle and enlarged. It was completely altered in the uh, 19th century and then restored back in 1955. It's a magnificent building. This church uh, is a Swedenborgian church in Bath, Maine, uh, built in 1843. Uh, and it's unusual in that it's a purely Greek temple form uh, with a, without a tower or a steeple. Uh, and most of the Greek revival churches built in New England had a tower or a steeple, which you know never existed in ancient Greek temples. Another Greek revival church, again in Maine, in uh, Bethel, built in 1847. Uh, it's a very simplified expression without elaboration of the capitals or uh, uh, fluting on the, on the pilasters. The simple application of one layer of wood over another creates a, a liveliness and uh, a great visual interest and with very simple, uh, very simple means. This early meeting house in uh, Groton, Massachusetts was built in 1755 and was turned uh, about 85 years later so that the new entrance faced the road. It was totally modified and made into a Greek revival church at that time. This photograph was taken in, uh, in the 1980s. With Greek revival, in order to imitate stone, wood was painted white and it was really with Greek revival that uh, so many churches became thought of as having to be white and uh, so the color of churches that preceded Greek revival, the federal and, uh, churches and the colonial churches, the meeting houses, which had actually been painted various colors, ended up white and the Greek revival really inspired this whiteness of all churches in New England. Uh, it's partly, this is partly what drew me to photographing these buildings because the whiteness of them was uh, just so striking on film, but it also is so striking in the landscape. This is one of my favorite photographs of a church. Uh, it's in northern Vermont, almost in Canada. A unique kind of situation where you sort of feel like somebody's smiling down on you from above. I set the camera down looked through the viewfinder and the picture was as I, as I saw it without having composed it. it. It just sort of was there. One of the things that appealed to me about the churches in, uh, in the countryside uh, and in these small villages is the way they're sited uh, because they were really the markers of, of the communities in which they sat. and. Uh, you know, there was a sense of place there. This is a small chapel in one Lancet, uh, New Hampshire. And like many of the summer churches in New England, uh, it is uh, non-denominational. Uh, this is a classic town, uh, Newfane, Vermont. County courthouse on the right, congregational church on the left. Wonderfully preserved uh, group of structures and uh, classic, classic New England. 
This was a Gothic Revival church in Watertown, Massachusetts, uh, built in 1842 at the top of a green and commanded the top of the hill. Uh, it was slated to be taken down in 1975. It's a Unitarian church which had only 12 parishioners at the time uh, and was heated only on Saturdays in advance of uh, Sunday services. And they just couldn't afford to maintain and repair it. Sadly, the church has been replaced uh, by a drive-in bank, which we see here, uh, a building which no longer commands the hillside, uh, a totally inappropriate structure to have at the top of a New England green. Uh, this is a Gothic Revival Church in Westford, Massachusetts, built in 1871 and recently expanded. I photographed this church 45 years ago. It was the first photograph that I took with my 4x5 camera. Since then, uh, some unfortunate changes have occurred. Uh, they had a need for more space for what looks like a uh, Sunday school and education room. And uh, they uh, ended up uh, ramming a new addition into uh, basically uh, the elements that you see in the original photograph. The tower and the end gable with the vertical uh, Gothic windows have been removed and the new addition has been uh, glued onto the building. There's not a single piece of exposed wood, of the original wood, left on the uh, original church. Everything has been clad with vinyl, including uh, the trim around the windows. Uh, so there's no need to paint the building any longer, but also a lot of the original character uh, of the building has been lost. I've been photographing these churches for more than 45 years, and during that time, I've seen more change and degradation that's occurred to these buildings than in the previous 150. These churches are really uh, integral to the cultural and architectural history of New England and need to be preserved. We have a wonderful heritage here of buildings that were created by very talented craftsmen, and we should value them.